so these pictures, these stories, must trigger all kinds of emotions for you. Oh, indeed, I think they, they trigger all sorts of emotions for all of us, Pete. It was a... You go back this time last year, uh, it was a truly awful period of time. Mm. Uh, we'd already seen a, an extraordinary toll with fires burning all through winter up in the north, and then they just continued to intensify as we went through spring and then turned into summer. Uh, and then as we came in closer to the, to the Christmas New Year uh, and into early January, uh, we just saw an extraordinary toll uh, occasioned by these fires burning uh, in unprecedented circumstances, uh, behaviour and, and spread like we've never experienced mm. before that was exceeding all the, all the science and all the experience around, around fire behaviour and spread models. And just remembering, um, uh, just under 2,500 homes were destroyed, thousands of other buildings, and, of course, the, the human toll, the tragedy of, of loss of life. And two lives were lost in October, seven in November, five in December and 12 in January. So an extraordinary toll, uh, but at the same time, as, as was mentioned in your prelude there, uh, we saw this extraordinary uprising of humanity, of community spirit. Uh, the firefighters, led by the volunteers and all their salaried counterparts, the police and emergency services, communities in harm's way, impacted and affected by the fires, and this outpouring of community generosity across the nation, around the world, uh, looking out for and extending a hand to those that needed it most. So there's all manner of emotions as we as we reflect on the events of last year and we head into Christmas this year. This time last year, Shane, what were the briefs that you were getting, do you recall, and did and were things as bad as you could have imagined? We always had the outlook, Pete, that it was going to be an above normal fire season, particularly across the Great Dividing Range, because the drought was so bad in the lead up to last year that the fire risk west of the Great Dividing Range was effectively non-existent. If there was one good thing in the drought, it was no bushfire risk in western New South Wales. But the drought had also meant that there was no moisture across the, the forested country, across the Great Dividing Range, and that's where we effectively saw all the fires, from the Queensland border to the Victorian border. And unfortunately, the daily briefings uh, usually resulted in, in the latest uh, damage assessment tolls, uh, reports of injuries or, or tragically loss of life, the outlook for a continuance of above average temperatures and below average rainfall. And whenever we thought there might have been a bit of reprieve in the weather systems moving across the state with some change activity or frontal activity, unfortunately, that would result in more lightning and just more fires. Mm. And um, I remember days when we were down to 40 or 50 fires uh, and, and it was a good day in, in the context of things. Uh, but then a lightning storm would move through and 12 hours, 24 hours later, we'd be back to 160, 170 fires, all of which were taking hold and spreading very, very quickly, impacting, damaging and affecting people uh, right across different parts of New South Wales. Nine firefighters lost their lives, as you, as you know, Shane. You, you essentially lost nine of your own. Was that the lowest point for you? Oh, there's no doubt about it, um, uh, Pete. Um, the loss of life, to see the damage and the, and the devastation and despair across communities, that was difficult enough. To see the loss of life uh, in communities and to see loved ones uh, losing, you know, the most precious of their people, that was tough enough. But there was nothing uh, for me uh, and for the firefighting fraternity, I think the broader community, uh, that we lost the lives of extraordinary individuals. Uh, yes, you're right, nine firefighters across Australia... Um, um, seven of those were in New South Wales alone. Uh, there's dates etched in my mind that'll be there forever. 19th of December, when that tragic accident southwest of Sydney resulted in the tree coming through the front windscreen of the truck uh, that killed mm. volunteer firefighters Jeff and, and Andrew. Uh, and then on the 30th of December, down near the Victorian border, an extraordinary cyclonic-type wind, wind event that was a fire-generated thunderstorm uh, at, 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 at the base of the fire ground there, resulted in the truck being overturned uh, and young Sam uh, was killed, another volunteer firefighter uh, who was out there doing his bit to save the community. On the 31st of December, uh, as it turned out as well, we lost another volunteer. We didn't know it was a volunteer at the time, uh, but, but Cole was on his way back, had done some protection in the community, was going back to the fire station to provide protection for community members that had evacuated, and he never made it back. He had a bad accident and they found him incinerated in his vehicle uh, uh, in, in the days yeah. that followed. 
Um, and then, of course, uh, when we, we didn't think it could get any worse, on the 23rd of January, uh, three of our aircrew, three, three aircrew uh, in Bomber 134, the Hercules water bombing aeroplane, oh, yeah. uh, it crashed uh, down in the, in the high country down near Cooma. Uh, and all three on board, um, Ian, Paul and, and Rick, uh, were killed uh, when that plane impacted on the ground. So, so those, those events were extraordinarily tragic, uh, but spending time with, with firefighting colleagues, uh, with the families and loved ones, and then, of course, um, the very difficult, the very necessary and special um, uh, funerals and memorial services uh, that, that unfolded in the days and weeks after yeah. those tragedies. Yeah, we've just uh, we've got about a minute left, uh, Shane, but, but how pleased are you uh, with the, the rate of recovery, uh, if I can put it that way, um, following last year at the moment? It's, it's, it's been unprecedented, Pete, and it's quite remarkable to see people um, making decisions and getting on, and there's plenty of people moving already into new homes that have been rebuilt and, uh, and their, their properties repaired. There's plenty of others, though, that are still in the process of building. And dare I say it, Pete, everybody's journey is individual, is, is different, and we've still got people today coming forward for the first time uh, after knowing there's offers of assistance saying, I'm finally ready to have the conversation. I'm finally ready to make decisions about where I want to go and how I want to do it. So, so we need to be mindful that everybody's circumstances are different. The, the recovery process is something like we've never seen before in this state. It's enormous, stretching from the Queensland border all the way to the Victorian border. But everybody's circumstances are different. Everybody's progress is different, necessarily so. And we all need to spare a thought for everybody impacted and affected by the fires, whether they were the firefighters, whether they're those trying to rebuild and pick up their lives and, and get on with things. As we're heading into Christmas, a special time of year, we hope it's going to be markedly different than last mm. year, but we hope uh, that people can spend time with their loved ones, with their friends, uh, catch up, have a little bit of downtime, preserve that special moment of the year uh, that most of us take for granted. And many of us last year, we simply didn't see Christmas or get Christmas. Mm. So hopefully there'll be a bit of... Uh, made up time and made up love as we head yeah. into this Christmas New Year period. Fingers crossed. All right, Shane Fitzsimmons, as always, appreciate your time this morning. Thanks for joining us here. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks, Pete.